Welcome to week 36 of Beloved Blackness. I'm Dr. B. In the past, I've talked about Dr. Linda James Meyer's phases of the psychology of oppression. And I've um, discussed the first four phases, or at least mentioned the first four phases, and we've discussed um, the very first one um, at length, a couple of um, vlogs. But I want to talk about the fifth phase that I do not believe I've mentioned in the past. So just as a recap, phase one is when the physical survival of the oppressed is in the hands of the oppressor through both terrorization and dehumanization. Phase two is when the oppressed is denied access to their cultural history and traditions. Phase three is when the oppressed is, their cultural traditions and history is actually negated by the oppressor. Phase four is when the history and traditions of the oppressor are elevated and then phase five is using divide and conquering in order to get the, the persons or the group who has been oppressed to internalize the history and traditions of the oppressor and then to fight for the privileges that the oppressor bestows upon that particular group. So I recently had someone ask, why is it that black people aren't as supportive of, of one another as other groups, um, cultural groups, or even religious groups are? And, and so that question then led me to, to think, oh yeah, I need to really talk about phase five, some on beloved blackness, so we can really think about that. So if you think about those first four phases, the terrorization, dehumanization, being the ways in which, or the means in which the physical survival of the press is kept, and then um, being denied access, and then your history being negated, and then the elevation of the history of the oppressor, then what happens as a group for people of, and we're gonna just deal with um, people of African descent, we then begin to internalize the, I, not just the history and traditions, but also the ideals of the oppressor. So in this situation, think about um, the ways in which we've internalized Eurocentric ways of being in the world. It could just be the lens of believing that who we are um, is grounded in being just individuals. So some people use the term individualistic um, way of being oriented in the world, as opposed to a collectivistic, recognizing that our identities isn't a separate identity as individuals, but that personal identity is grounded within a collective identity, whether it's our cultural identity or our family identities or even our um, larger, greater spiritual identities. And so an African-centered way of being in a world would be to have more of a collectivistic um, experience or view of oneself, not just an individualistic. But when we are operating out of phase um, five of Dr. Leonard James Meyer's Psychology of Oppression, that idea of divide and conquer is really important, right? Because if we have unity as a people, then if we unify, then what are we going to fight against? Against our oppressors, right? Against the institutions, the people who embody um, not just oppressing, but suppressing and damaging and hurting and um, uh, uh, viewing us through a lens of anti-black. And so part of what we want to do and consider the con continue to think about and be really strategic and careful of are what are those ways in which we've internalized without even realizing it, a Eurocentric way of being in the world. And let's just take the individualism as one example. And I'll, we'll think through and talk about some other examples as we go on for the rest of the year. But this idea of I am a person as an individual and my individual desires, my individual um, accolades, my individual achievements, my individual um, purposes are what I'm centering as opposed to my personal experiences are grounded within a collective way of seeing oneself and a collective way of being in the world. All right, so we'll continue to think more about this, but I wanted to um, mention to you that there is a fifth phase of the psychology of oppression by from Dr. Linda James Myers and for us to start really thinking about how this divide and conquer mentality um, is set up and how those those first four, four phases laid a foundation for this fifth phase of divide and conquer and wishing that we could have the privileges bestowed upon us by the oppressor. All right, until next week.